Hi, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Farah. I'm here to read you a book, and I hope you enjoy it. It's called Giraffe Problems, and it's written by Joy John, and it's illustrated by Lane Smith. I feel bad about my neck. I do. I can't help it. It's too long, too bendy, too narrow, too dopey, too patterned, too stretchy, too high, too lofty, too necky. Yes, my neck is too necky. Everybody stares at it. This guy, that guy, him, her, them, whatever that is, and her again. Yep, I feel bad about my neck. I've tried dressing it up. I've added a scarf, two scarves, a bundle of scarves, a mountain of scarves. I've tried bow ties and regular ties and both. I've tried hiding it away in the shrubs. I've hung it out in ditches. I've stood behind trees and I've spent time in the river. Other animals have necks that just work. Take a gander at this zebra's neck. Stripes always look good. So classic. Quit staring at me. Or gaze upon this elephant's neck. Strong and powerful, yet graceful. Stop talking about me. Or glimpse this lion whose neck is adorned with glorious manes of flowing locks. What a sight, how inspiring. Why can't I have a neck like that? Are you always this loud? My mom always said I should be proud of my neck. She said other animals would love to have my neck like this. Yeah, right. No offense, Mom, but nobody wants this neck. It's a neck only a mother could love. It all makes me want to hide until the sun sets. Sheesh. Good evening. been admiring your neck. Oh, how I wish my neck looked like yours. I'd get so much done in a day. Goodness, I can only imagine all the reaching and grabbing and looking around I'd do. I'd accomplish many of my goals for sure. Meanwhile, I'm saddled with this little excuse for a neck. Look who he's comparing it to. Here, watch me try to stretch it out. Ugh. See, that's about as far as it goes. Pathetic, right? It's basically necklace. <sighs> you feel bad about your neck too? Yep. I'm Edward. It's lovely to meet you, Cyrus. Can I tell you something else, Edward? Of course, Cypress. And it's the whole page. I love this illustration. There is a hill in the distance, which you surely can see from your great vantage. I've stood on that very hill for seven straight days and no staring skyward, watching as a single piece of fruit a lone banana slowly changed from green to yellow, ripening. I've endured windy nights and unseasonably brisk mornings with very little sleep as I waited and waited, hoping against hope that the fruit 
would drop before me so I could sample its sweetness and nourish myself in the process. Yet, day after day, I felt like such a fool as I stretched my neck toward those greedy branches only to be limited by my own physical shortcomings. You want a banana from a tree? That's what I said. Yes. You can see he's picking it from the tree for him. And it says, plunk. Here you go. Whoop. Oh, did you, you did it. You made it look so easy. Munch, 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 munch. Delectable. So that's what a banana tastes like, huh? It was worth the wait. My good friend. Edward, face it. Your neck is impressive. It allows you to do amazing things. For instance, you just solved my week-long banana dilemma in 10 seconds. And a dilemma is a problem. Well, thank you, Cyrus. I think you have a swell neck too. It's elegant and dignified, and it works well with your shell. That means a great deal to me, Edward. Say, do you like bow ties, Cyrus? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, Edward. I have very little experience with them. You look wonderful, Cyrus. As do you, Edward. I feel good about our necks, Edward. Thank you, Cyrus. For once, so do I. Yes, for once. So do I. Well, I hope you enjoyed that book. And I know it made me think about you. And I know that we are trying to stay active and enjoy some literature while we're home. So I hope you are looking for other videos and you have another wonderful experience with a read aloud. Enjoy.